Hey folks, Dan Frio here with your market update for October 17th, 2024. So we saw mortgage rates. They yesterday they were but let's just say they did nothing. Okay, they did nothing. It was all in anticipation of what's going to come out today. So today we had basically the only news of the week. It was retail sales and some jobs numbers and things like that. Actually, it came in well, let me let you see it, but um, let, let's go through this data because this is what the Fed's really monitoring. They're like, okay, we, we, we got to beat on inflation now. We just need to make sure we just don't clobber uh, all the consumers. So we're going to look at retail sales and we're, we are also going to continue to watch that job market. So the, that data was in today. Um, I'm going to show you just a little bit of a brief uh, analysis of it. So here's all the economic news we have for today to go through, but just want to show you one other tool we have. We found this recently. I'm going to use it probably every day just is a backdrop that at least give you some guidance on where things are. So when the Federal Reserve is monitoring things, what they usually monitor is, is the state of the economy. And what they're looking at is what is inflation doing and what's the job market doing? That's their two mandates. They have two mandates. They, they were created for two reasons. One was price stability and one was to have uh, the economy at full employment. Okay, so if you see in through here, you see the inflation numbers. They're at 2.2. Two. Eh, the Fed wants to get it to 2, so it's on a good trajectory downwards. We have the unemployment rate in the last two readings have been ticking down. We we're at 4.3, then we went to 4.2, and then we went to 4.1 on the unemployment rate. So basically these two numbers are right in line. Then right over my head, you're seeing the gross domestic production. It's at 3%. So that's a hefty, a hefty growth rate for a country. And then over on the right here, you're just going to see the federal funds rate. And that's what we talk about when, it, when we talk about the CME FedWatch tool and things like that. So that's the basis of the data that we have. Another piece of data I want to share with you you guys is, is disposable income. How much disposable income uh, people have right now? So this is from the Federal Reserve, and it tells us how much disposable income the average consumer like me and you has. Okay, I haven't shown this in a long time. We did it yesterday on our live event, but let's go back just over the last, let's say, 10 years. Okay, so here's the savings rates or how much money people have in the bank uh, as consumers, me and you. OK, so there's an anomaly. If you go back in the maximum thing, you can see where this thing has been. You know, people save money over time. OK, and it gradually would increase. Then you had a couple little bumps. But there's this bump right here that just doesn't fit in place. It's like that Sesame Street thing. Do You see anything here that just is out of place? Well, if you look at the savings rate, it went like this. And if, if, if you take out this blip, it was just a normal, steady pace up. Nice piece of information right through here. What happened through here? Do you guys know what happened through here? Basically in 19 or 2019 to 2021, 2022. Yeah, you're right, COVID. So with nobody working, how did so many people get so much money? Well, here's what happened. And, and a lot of people denied me at that time, but now the data is coming in. What happened was you had a lot of people, probably 80% of homeowners that didn't really have to make a mortgage payment. I didn't, I don't know if you knew that. It was called forbearance. So during the uh, pandemic, if you had a mortgage and it was issued by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you could actually just call your mortgage servicer and say, eh, I'm affected by COVID. I'm not going to make any payments. And you can make pay and not make payments for up to about 18 months. Okay. So you, a lot of people didn't have mortgage payments. And then you had the student loan for, uh, forbearance as well, or deferrals. So that also made, if you had a student loan, you didn't have to pay those as well. So now you have two of the biggest bills that you probably have in your life. Um, you don't have to make a payment. Okay, just imagine if you didn't own a house, you didn't have to make any car payments or any credit card payments. Where would your money go? Well, right here. It would go in your savings account. So then people put the money in the savings. They see, wow, I got a lot of money in the savings. I'm going to spend. I'm going to buy some stuff. So you buy and buy and buy and buy. That caused inflation because at the same time we had supply chain issues. So that's the backdrop of where we've been. So then you could see where the disposable income, everybody used up their money because prices went up. People were, a lot of people were silly with their money and they depleted it all back to there. And then we picked up right on the normal path that we would have been otherwise. Okay, so we had to get this money out of circulation. And that's what the Federal Reserve did a pretty darn good job at. So that's a little bit of a backdrop of where the country is and where we were. So now let's get to the economic news that we have for today. The easiest way to do this, let's get to Rick Santelli over at the CME, uh, the CME 
uh, exchange. But right now, if you look at this, you got green across the board when it comes to the equity markets. So that basically means the markets are liking whatever it sees right now. Russell 2000 is down 0.8. We're not going to change that. The, the VIX is unchanged. So that's good news for the markets. Let's see what cryptocurrency is doing. Cryptocurrencies is, are down 1,000. But this hit 68,000 yesterday. Oil is oil depleting. Yes, oil is down to $70 a barrel. You can see crude oil prices edge higher after four-day losing streak. So we're back down to $70 a barrel, right in line where we, we need inflation. Okay, so now let's get over to uh, Rick Santelli at the uh, CME uh, Mercantile Exchange to give us the breaking numbers when it comes to what's out today, retail sales and jobless claims. So let's get over to Rick, see what the markets are telling us. Pay attention right through here as he's talking. This was live. You're going to see the market reaction as he's talking, providing these numbers. So when he comes back, we're going to go through my whole piece of the information right through here. We're going to break it down, not every one of these, but I'm going to just show you where we were, where we are, and what progress the Federal Reserve has been making. So Rick, take it away for us, buddy. And then we'll We'll be back and I'll explain what he said, and then I'll see how the markets are reacting to this today. Let's get to Rick. Uh, we've got some uh, some news, Rick, on uh, the jobless claims. We certainly do, Joe. September retail sales, let's start out there. Up four-tenths of a percent. That's better than expected. And four-tenths, at least up till now, with unrevised, follows uh, some solid numbers going backwards. We had up one-tenth last month. Doesn't sound great, but prior to that, we had 1.1. So we're holding on to the gains. We're not slipping into any negative territory on these numbers. And if you strip out autos, it improves. It improves up half of 1%, up half of 1%. That equals where we were in June. To surpass that, you have to go to March. Now let's strip out autos and gas, up 7 tenths of a percent. That's the best since June when it was up 8 tenths. And the control number, well, the control number is when you synthesize everything, you come up with a core, it's up another whopping 7 tenths. That's pretty powerful considering the rearview mirror up 3 tenths and up 4 tenths. Cumulatively, pretty strong. And there's revisions coming in. They're actually 1 tenth better. Now let's switch gears, shall we? Initial jobless claims. 241,000, we're expecting a number close to 260,000. In the rearview mirror, 258 became 260, so we're down 19,000. But there's a lot of asterisks here, whether it's Columbus Day holiday, whether it's some of the storms, hurricanes may have prevented some of the states from keeping up with their, you know, putting in their information. So we want to put a little asterisk there on if you paid attention to him, what he's talking about is, you remember we had the hurricanes and you had the port strikes and you had all this other stuff. How skewed or how, I, I guess, misinformed are these numbers? And only, only time's going to tell, but that is what's tough right now for the Fed. I, I give the Fed uh, some kudos right now on how they're going to get through this because you have uh, the, the hurricane that just decimated you know, a huge part of our country. So a lot of those people are going to be not be able to work. Uh, businesses are going to be shut down. Manufacturing is going to be shut down. It, it's going to be a lot, lot more devastating in numbers than we expect. So the next few months, I'm going to look at some of these numbers and I'm not going to overreact on how they act because you don't know how accurate they are. And he, he, he referenced that in his video as well. Continuing claims, of course, it's the 19th month over 1.8 million. We have not seen 1.9 million since November of 21. This number is 1,867. That would be the biggest since the last week in July when it was slightly higher. And last, certainly not least, Philly Fed, this is an October read, expecting a number around three. It's triple at 10.3. That's the best number since just July when it was around 14. If you look at interest rates, they move much higher. As I've been talking about the last couple of days, if you look at the what propelled interest rates higher, it was the 10-4 release of the September jobs report. And we moved over 4% in the 10, but all maturities jumped. And they arced. They came right back down basically to those levels yesterday in anticipation of what is probably the next most important number, and that was retail sales. Proved to be pretty good. Uh, we are now looking at a, a yield that's around 407-ish. 
Prior to the release, it was 403. Uh, so right now, you're looking at a number that's up about uh, six, seven basis points on tens. 395 is where we were on twos. They leapfrog up to 4%. They're now up six basis points. And the fact that we've breached 4% in a two year tells you how important some of these metrics that are top tier measurements of the economy are to investors trying to handicap what the easing cycle will be and trying to parse through weird stories about it's really sad that the Fed's data dependent. Shouldn't data dependent be their central theme? Joe and the gang backed. So that was it. He always has a plug there to kind of blast the Fed and so forth. So let's get over to it. Like I said, the, the Dow Jones and all the markets right through here. Let's see it one more time. Let's update that. We have the Dow Jones uh, up 142, S&P up. Let's get over to bond yields. Bond yields right now are taking it on the chin. We got the MBS market down 21. So that means mortgage rates are going to go up. Let me explain how this works, folks, for newbies out there. Let me explain how mortgage bonds, when you're focusing on, on this, how to understand it. Okay. So what we focus in on here at the channel is where are mortgage rates going? And then we also focus, we're, we're trying to expand out to help educate you guys on other areas, asset classes of the, of the country, like, you know, stocks, uh, bonds, ETFs, cryptocurrencies, and things like that. But today we're talking about uh, purely interest rates. Okay. So how the, here's how this works. We're seeing on the screen right now, it says MBS 5.5. That's a mortgage bond. That's all you need to know about that. Okay. The 100.20, that actually is the price of the bond, okay? And then you see next to it, it says minus 0.21. That's what, how, what the price of the bond has done. So it's down 21 ticks, we call it, 21 basis points. Okay, so here's how prices and, and yields work with bonds. If the price goes up, yields come down. Okay, it's, it's as simple as that. So if the price goes down, yields go up. Let me, let me make, it, make it as simple as I can for you. Let's start with a bond. And I'm going to say it's a mortgage bond and its maturity value is $100. Okay, and its maturity is next year. Okay, next year, when I, when I give you my, my coupon back, I'll, I'll explain this a little more. I'm going to get $100 back. Okay, so what I do in today's market, I'm going to buy that mortgage bond from the investors and I'm going to pay them $50. Okay, $50 for that $100 maturity bond. Okay, so I pay them $50 and next year when the bond matures, I give them the bond and they give me $100 back. Remember, the face value of the bond is $100. So what was my rate of return? I gave you $50 and I got back $100 in return. I doubled my money, so I got 100% return. Okay, so now let's drive up that price and let's let's make it stupid. Let's say we're going to give you $100 for that $100 bond. Okay, so today I give you 100 bucks, you give me the bond. Next year comes around, I give you the bond back and you give me my $100 back. What was my rate of return? I give you 100, you give me 100 back. It was zero. So see how if I pay you a higher price for the bond, the yield comes down. Okay, so we love when this price goes up. We haven't seen up in a few days. Let's go back, we can go about six months and you're gonna see it. See, so here's where we were back, let's say in May, and then this bond market moved up and up and up. That was all good news for mortgages. And then all of a sudden you had the uh, some employment numbers come in and some other things come in and all of a sudden, boom, it, it trickled out. So that's what we're seeing right now in the market. So now it's starting to seem like good news in the markets are, good news in the markets. But it's usually when you have stocks way up, you have bonds pulling back, kind of exactly like we're seeing today. You have the equity markets just killing it, and you have the bond market pulling back. That's usually what happens. Okay, so that's how we follow things. So usually when you see a rally in the stocks, you're like, oh man, rates are going to go up. So that's what we focus, we focus in on. So let's get to the economic calendar to see the, the information. There's really nothing out tomorrow. We have building permits, housing starts. This is, this is going to play a huge role in the economy, especially housing, but it's not really going to do any much, much to interest rates. Okay, so what we had today, like Rick Santelli was saying, and I'll just skim through these real quick just to give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down if it's good news or bad news. We had continued jobless claims at 1.867. A million. It's basically right in line of where it was. So we'll give that a neutral. Core retail sales, it was supposed to uh, came in at 0 0.2 previously. It's supposed to come in at 0 0.1. It came in at 0.5. I'm going to give that a thumbs up uh, for the data, but it's not good news for the Fed. It's good news for the equities, but not good news for the Fed. Initial jobless claims, uh, 261 previously. It was supposed to come in at 241. It came in dead nuts on, right on target. So you see that right through there. Then you start looking through uh, retail sales. They were up. 
Uh, not any, you know, the retail sales right through here month over month went from 0.3 to 0.7. A lot of these numbers, you could have, the, the numbers can be really skewed right now because of everything going on. And, and what I mean by everything going on, again, you have the hurricanes, the port strikes. A lot of people probably hoarded things because they thought the strike was going to last longer than it was. So people bought more things than they, they otherwise would have. So is, are, are a lot of these numbers skewed? I, I'm just going to take this as a net neutral for the day. I'm not going to overreact one way or another. I think that's how the bond markets and the equity markets should take this because the data is just, you know, how accurate is that data based on everything we have right now? So let's get over the CME FedWatch tool. What's it telling us? Well, there's now almost a nine, well, there's a 9% chance that the Federal Reserve is not going to do anything. Okay, the yesterday, this was, I think, two or three. So this went up to 9% based on today's data. And we're going to watch that, watch this every day. So what you're seeing on your screen, if you're new to the channel, this is a CME FedWatch tool. Very important. It tells us what the, what the markets like the equity markets and the bond markets and everything, are anticipating what the Federal Reserve is going to do in 21 days. What happens in 21 days? Well, that's when the Federal Reserve is going to meet, and they're going to tell us what exactly they're going to do. Right now, this is telling us right through here, across the top through here, this is where the federal funds rate is, okay? And down through here are the, are the meeting dates. Well, what's the federal funds rate today? It's 475 to 5%. So if we go back to the CME FedWatch tool, 475 to 5%. So there's a 10% chance they're going to stick with rates right where they are. But there's a 90, basically a 91% chance they're going to drop the rate from 475 to 5 to 45 to 475. That means a quarter cut. And then you can see the December meeting, they're supposed to cut again. And then from there, next year, it's kind of a coin, coin flip. I'm not even going to go out that far. We don't even know what's going to happen at the next meeting. And then the December meeting is kind of a coin flip at this point, too, because like Rick said, the Fed is data dependent. So that's what we're seeing right through there. If you go to Yahoo Finance, the data through here is I, I, I skimmed through here to see, you know, what's what's active right now. So we'll go through here. Chip stocks surge showing investors will be patient with AI. You can see that right through here. Jobless claims fall more or fall by uh, most in three months. That's good news there. NVIDIA is set to dominate. We know there. ECB, that's the European Central Banks. They're cutting rates and they're continuing to cut. So they're on their third cut. Uh, Blackstone just came in and their stock their stocks are rising on big profits. Uh, go through here. ETFs. We're going to talk about ETFs at some point. ECB's cutting rates. Stocks uh, hit new highs. Uh, meta layoffs. Just let, uh, let I don't know if Nestle settle uh, flagship shoppers uncertain around U.S. election. And then big central banks are firmly in the rate cut mode. So because big banks, as you saw yesterday into yesterday's video, most banks make the make money between the spread of when they what they get the money for and what they lend it to you for. So as as the Fed drops rates, that spread with banks is going to get a little bit bigger, helping bank stocks. So if you like what you see, my name is Dan Frio. I do this report every day. My whole focus here is to help you understand the markets. When I talk about the markets, I talk about the equity markets, and I talk about real estate. I'm actually a mortgage loan officer. I'd love to help you navigate the environment. If you're looking to buy your first house, maybe your first investment property, check out our website. Right now, the, our, the rate update is under construction. We're revamping that thing to maybe look at a little bit newer and more exciting. But right now, you can go to Win the House You Love, and Kyle Seagraves, he is on our team. You can find a whole bunch of information right through here. What we ask you to do is if you're getting ready to buy that first house, just click right through here, get pre-qualified. If you want to talk to us or do, th do something like that, we normally have a consultation with you. You can sit hit here and, and get pre-qualified. You can actually set up a consultation with me or one of the team members here to talk about your situation and help us guide you through that. And then there's also tools up here that will help guide you. We have uh, two that we just put on here. It's Illinois Grants. So if you're purchasing any properties in Illinois, because that's where our bank is located, we can help you with a $10,000 grant. See if you qualify for that grant right through here. And if you're anywhere in the country, we have three handpicked uh, down payment assistance programs just for you guys. Check that out in the grant finder right through here. So that is my report for the morning. I'll be back later this afternoon to let you know how all this mess ended up for the day. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, help me get to 32,000 and help us get there this weekend if we can. Subscribe right over there if you don't mind. Take care. See you this afternoon. Bye-bye.